Hello, Foot Geeks fans. Today we're here with Dr. Cody Al from Baseline Chiropractic and Wellness, and we're going to be talking about the leg length discrepancies. So a leg length discrepancy, there's two parts to it. There's what we call a functional one and an anatomical one. So a functional one is typically the ones that your providers can treat. So those are fake, semi-fake um, leg length dis discrepancies where one leg is longer than the other. However, your hips are the reason for that change because your hip position is stuck in a certain way that creates the image as if your one leg is being in a lifted position. So that creates a shortening of that leg. And so those are actually fixable through chiropractic or sometimes massage as well as physio as well, just to get some of those muscles loosened as well as those joints moving better. So that's the functional aspect of it. Anatomical is probably what we're more talking about today is basically you have one leg that has grown longer than the other one. Okay. And so there's different reasons for that. So um, they're actually not uncommon in the population. So people don't grow naturally symmetrically all the time. So sometimes uh, injuries, sometimes just poor luck, sometimes just aspects of your bone growth are different on either side, you have these issues. Oftentimes, everyone has a little bit of it and it's usually minuscule, a couple millimeters here and there, you wouldn't even notice it. However, when it's a really big gap, that's when things start becoming issues and sometimes people will have chronic low back pain or they'll have hip pain and knee pains and ankle pains and sometimes even up further in the chain because of the way that those things are happening. Okay. And do you find that the pain kind of presents itself mostly on one side or does it present itself on kind of both sides of the body? It. So my, my philosophy is the body compensates for any changes that we have. Mm -hmm. And so what I've seen in practice is oftentimes it is the side that is compensating for the change. So say you have a short right leg, then the left leg is doing more and it's doing more stuff so you see more symptoms on that side. Mm -hmm. However, I've also seen it on the right side. So it depends on how the compensations have developed for each person. Each person is different, they're unique, yeah. their brain structures differently. So it allows them to just basically, if you sprain your ankle, for example, you'll start limping and so the other side takes on more force. However, some people, they don't limp that way and they cringe towards the other side and therefore their other side hurts. Same reasoning with this. Just depends on how your body takes the threat and how it uses other muscles to compensate for the movement that you're dealing with. All right, awesome. So for a functional, we're basically looking at treatments through massage, chiro, or physio? Yeah, so basically with, with functional, it's basically, if you look at the hips, mm -hmm. they're supposed to be level. And if your legs are the same length, then your feet are balanced on the floor. However, if your hip is tilted, which as you're walking, actually your hip is doing this all the time. So say if you were sitting in a poor chair for a long time, maybe on a flight, maybe you fell, or maybe you, even something trivial like stepping off a sidewalk not knowing, you may have jammed your hip into a certain position mm -hmm. that may have just been like, oh, fell there, and therefore it's stuck here. So now the left side is constantly moving, the right side isn't, so now you're twisting, you're turning, you're doing all these things to compensate for that for that jamming. Yeah. And now this, this joint here presents as a longer leg. And as a result, then you're leaning, you're doing different things, and as a result, you're getting some more pains and issues as things are happening. Awesome. So if you correct that with exercise, with movement, with um, massage, with physio, all these collections can all create some of the changes that have helped them. Excellent. And how do you correct for, uh, or how do you measure for an actual versus a functional leg length discrepancy? So a lot of it is physical testing. So an actual leg length dis uh, discrepancy, you can measure by a couple tests. So, so um, the best in terms of research and everything like that is doing an x-ray. It's called a scanogram. So basically it's a big x-ray that takes from your hip bone all the way to the bottom of your ankle and it actually compares both sides. So you mm -hmm. can actually measure it and do that. Canada, um, Vancouver, I haven't found a place that does a scanogram. In the States it actually is a common practice. Okay. But here isn't. I don't know if we don't have the machines or people aren't trained in it. We just don't have that access. And so a regular x-ray won't work because a regular x-ray is taking chunks 
And because x-rays are magnifications, mm -hmm. so it's hard to measure unless you have one image yeah. in the same place. Yeah. So that's why you can't just take three images of hip, knee, and then ankle and then be like, oh, I know the difference because your measurements are going to be off. Yeah. So in terms of that, um, whereas the best way in practice, what we do is usually tape measuring. So a tape measure, so when I see that it's not functional, then I start tape measuring. And the tape measuring, it's really easy. So take it home, you can use like a tape measure like this. I have a different one in the office, but this is one that you can use at home. It's a simple one. You're going from your belly button all the way to the inside of your ankle, the bottom of that inside of the ankle part, and you're measuring both sides. Okay. Then after that, you, you'll feel these hip bones on the side, and you measure from that point down to the outside of your ankle. So you're measuring two points of contact. So okay. then you compare those results from side to side, and usually you'll find that it has a difference in terms of that. And that's what anatomical changes are. Yeah. And so that's how you find that. Functionally, how we check it is getting you lying down, right? Lying down, pulling, measuring, and seeing visually, is there, is there a change? And then the cool thing is when you sit up, does it change? So there's different measurements of how it changes. When you're sitting up, does it get longer? Does it get shorter? Does it move the same distance? Those all give us clinical knowledge in mm -hmm. terms of what's going on with your hip. Is your hip turning? Is your hip something like that? Because when you sit up, your hip is stabilized, so it will push certain things forward. So legs forward, legs, legs back, and that's how we tell if it's functional. And if it's functional in terms of that, then we can change it through treatment. If it's non-functional and it's anatomical, it doesn't matter who's treating you, nothing's gonna change. They're not gonna make your leg grow longer. Right. So you'd have to basically, it was an anatomical discrepancy, you'd have to put something under the shorter leg in order for you to exactly. balance out the, the body. Right? So the best way I think is having just a little boost in there. The boosting is a little bit different. So go see your providers to see exactly what you need. However, um, rule of thumb that we usually go by is half the distance mm -hmm. that you're missing. So if you're missing, say, a centimeter, then we give you a half, half a centimeter lift. Just to, just to create some of those changes because we don't want to give you the full one because your body doesn't know how to balance for that. Yeah, yeah. So uh, would you gradually move up to the full one or uh, just keep it at half? Most of the research says to keep it at the half zone because okay. it'll, it'll balance out enough symptoms and your compensation should take on the rest of it. They say not to go to the full length because the measurements are so really grossly inaccurate. Like because those millimeters, like how do you get a millimeter with this? <laughs> so challenges with True that, that yeah. are, are one of the things, unless sometimes we get like severe anatomical changes, that's with say a child breaks their growth plate mm -hmm. during adolescence and the growth plate is completely damaged and therefore you have like a significantly short leg. Yeah. Those are different because then they might have full shoes, they might have full things like that to facilitate that. And those are more expertise based. Those are, I would not suggest like a, like a three, three like inch or four inch kind of thing having a change and yeah. then going to see a chiropractor to make that change. I would say there's orthopedic surgeons or stuff like that that can create and facilitate those. We're talking about the minuscule pieces here and there that we're dealing with. Minor so, changes, maybe what, up to like centimeter and a half, centimeter, two centimeters yeah. kind of thing. Well, little, most, yeah. little pieces here yeah. and there that aren't so severe that you would be. Most, most of these are just people, they present with chronic something, chronic low back, chronic hip, chronic knee, chronic ankle. Yeah. Something is going on, that's, that's something that we're seeing and typically we'll assess for something. For sure. Now, I mean, when we do leg lifts that are really, really high, I mean, up to a centimeter, you can probably do within the shoe, right? But uh, most of the time the wedge would run from the heel just to behind the ball of the foot. And that way, um, you know, it kind of gives you that extra uh, support as you're walking through the gait cycle. Uh, obviously, if you can put it on the outside of the shoe, it's going to be more effective. Uh, and then also, I, I believe, you know, based on when you're using lifts, it's always best to use them all the time, not to, not to wear them in your shoes and then go barefoot at home because it's going to throw your hip out of balance and it's going to really you know, affect, obviously, the, um, the pain sensation and potentially also the comfort level when it comes to leg length discrepancies. Completely agree. So in terms of those, like your compensation patterns happen because of the way that your structure is ba based on. Yeah. And so if you're not wearing that lift, 
you're only wearing it for certain times and certain things, your pain can come back because your compensations are kicking back in because it can't balance it. Exactly. Well, thanks very much for uh, joining yeah, us here today on Foot Geeks. And uh, if you have any questions uh, for Dr. Cody, please check the uh, link in the description below. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet on YouTube and you found value in this video, do so right over there. Have an awesome day. See ya.